Hi, you're on the Alice Reddit Stories channel. Subscribe to my channel as well as to my Facebook, the link is in the description. Enjoy watching. Last year I injured my lower back in a way I had to be carried out of my home by EMTs because I could not stand or extend my body upright without excruciating pain, it's not sciatica. I wound up in the hospital for four days for testing and evaluation and bettered in with home healthcare for a few weeks after. I'm still recovering and walking with a cane a year in. This was a serious injury that has had lasting consequences. The second night I was in the hospital, I made the mistake of answering a call from my mother. I typically don't take calls from her at night or on the weekends because she is an alcoholic and on the weekends, especially at night, she tends to be in the blackout drunk zone. You never know which version of her you will get sobbing, cruel, laughing and joking, slurring so much it's not even words. It's all an option if it's too late at night. When she's sober, she acts and speaks like she cares about me and doesn't say any of the things like when she's drunk. I was tired, I had been awake more than 24 hours going through the nightmare of overloaded hospitals during COVID last fall, I had been packed into a second ambulance and transferred to a different hospital due to overcrowding in the hospital, lack of intake triage nurses in the ER, and lack of staff to run the MRI at the main hospital. It was really ugly. All this is to say, I was exhausted, in pain, and not really thinking straight, so I made the mistake of answering her call at night thinking I would receive comfort from my mother. Nope. It was blackout drunk mom, the cruel variety. When I told her I was in the hospital, she asked, why is there always something wrong with you? The tone of her voice held so much disgust and contempt I was completely shocked and immediately devastated. Please note, I do not have overnight hospital stays with any frequency. My last was almost 10 years ago. She was just pissed she had to talk about me and not whatever her booze brain was ruminating on. That phrase burned in my brain for months and took a long time to come out. There was a heated exchange. I hung up on her pretty quickly once I came to my senses about how pointless blackout drunk arguing is. She called back 30 minutes later and left a rambling, incoherent voicemail and that was it for the night. The next day she called me sober and says, oh sweetie, I just heard from, aunt, you're in the hospital. OMG, are you okay? I tell her about our conversation from the night before and how much it hurt me. I demand an apology. She got very defensive and tried to say no such exchange happened and I offered to play her the voicemail she left me as proof. She got even more defensive and said, fine, I'm sorry. But you're an asshole too. I did not call her an asshole. She added that herself. I told her that wasn't an apology and I wasn't talking to her again until I got one and hung up. She proceeds to get blackout drunk for the second day and the calls start again a few hours later. I didn't answer any of them, but she left multiple voicemails. She tells me about how lazy I am, how I need to get off my ass and stop laying around in bed all day, you know, my hospital bed. I need to stop making excuses and stop shirking my responsibilities. She says I need to pull myself up by my bootstraps because that's how it's always been done in our family. She literally bootstrapped me y'all. People, my bills are paid and my responsibilities are handled. At that time I was in the process of opening a business and the injury didn't stop any of this. A mobile notary was able to come to my bedside to execute contracts on time when I was immobilized at home. None of this garbage she was spewing had any bearing on my actual life. It was being said exclusively to be hurtful. But it worked. It hurt me so bad. My own mother saying such awful things to me while I was in such a low place. I was vulnerable, in agonizing pain, isolated in the hospital due to COVID protocols, scared I wasn't going to ever walk normally again, and it got to me. I have not spoken a single word to her after her non-apology more than a year ago. A close family member passed away recently, and I did not attend due to my injury preventing me from flying. I'm grieving the loss of my family member. Not being able to connect with my family for this grieving process has been extremely difficult. It has made me evaluate what I want from this situation with my mom now that the crisis phase of my injury has passed. 
This rift between me and my mother has caused a rift of silence slash avoidance in the family, and I want to find some kind of resolution, but I cannot find any clarity on what exactly it is I want. I think I want to end the no contact, but I cannot find the words for what I would even say. I have been reading books, I have a therapist, but I'm not making any progress at all on this subject. I know she hasn't changed, and she isn't going to change. After a year of soul-searching, I know in my core I will not be getting an apology, no matter how much I want one. She is completely emotionally stunted and fully protected and enabled by the family. She is 64. Her changing isn't an option, but leaving things in this state weighs on me every single day of my life. It is becoming unbearable. I think about all the ways she wasn't a cruel fuck-up and the horrific abuse she endured in her young life. I have empathy for how she became this person and I am no longer able to cut myself off from this empathy as I had been in the beginning when I was focused intently on my own physical recovery. I'm the one who will have to live with my choices and this silence once she is gone. I was completely comfortable with this possibility before, but as time has gone on, I feel less comfortable with it. I hear her voice in my head when I make eggs. I think about all the ways she got things right, even as she was fighting her own battles. I'm grieving someone who is still here and I have the option to go back to our strictly boundaried relationship if I choose to wade into those waters. I can't decide what I want more, connection with my empathy or protection of my boundaries. All this being said, would it be a mistake to attempt an end to no contact at this point? TLDR, blackout drunk mother, spends two days spewing cruelty at me while I'm immobilized in a hospital bed with a severe back injury. She refuses to acknowledge or apologize for what she has said and done and I've been no contact for more than a year since. I'm struggling with the pain and feelings of no contact. Would it be a mistake to end no contact? Write your opinion in the comments. I'll see every comment, thanks. So in February of 2021, I met the gentleman through mutual friends and hit it off immediately, things moved very fast. I felt like we had an amazing and strong connection, but just as quickly as the relationship came on, so did the problems. We argued frequently, but would make up and he would be incredibly sweet. Some days he seemed like he wanted to be with me, going above and beyond, and other days he did not seem to care at all. I chalked this up to his workload, but it was the primary cause of most of our arguments. Fast forward to the end of July 2021, and things are getting beyond strained. I notice he's commenting sweet things on this particular woman's status, and when I confronted him he called me crazy. It ended, there was a lot of emotion, and it was ugly. Five days later, he has taken weeks of leave off of work and has drove 600 miles to see her. It should be the end of it, he was using me for companionship and wanted a future with her, but things ended up not working with her. He came back up. I asked him about it and he stated they were just friends, he planned the trip last minute because he needed to get away because he was so upset about our breakup and he did not mean to fall for her but he did. It took a lot of mending in time, but stupidly I got back with him and he blocked her. Even typing this out makes me feel dumb, but after that he was truly amazing. He would go above and beyond with making me dinners and complimenting me, making me feel truly special, but as more time passed something still felt off. He never took me on trips, he never talked about the future, he's a very adamant future planner, I'm friends with one of his exes and she stated that he never would shut up about having a home and family with her, after only 11 months they were planning a tubal reversal. A few weeks ago, he said he needed to travel 300 miles away to help a friend with their home. This drummed up negative feelings. I told him to go, but I was very obviously struggling with it. The same feelings of abandonment started up like last time he left. The big thing was that I didn't feel like he would do that for me. Not even in a jealous way, but he emphasized money heavily, making me pay for gas to take me up to see my child when I was without a car. 125 miles, paying him back $200 for a car battery when I was struggling, etc., pretty much everything but food, he was very extravagant in giving about food, so driving 200 miles to help someone without worrying about gas gave me anxiety. When I brought that up, he would get very upset, stating variations of I can't do enough for you. Even if I tried to talk calmly about my feelings. I was not always calm though, 
I am an emotional person and I'm trying really hard to get that in check. Just yesterday I was sent old messages by a third friend from when he was seeing the lady that was 600 miles away, and my worst fears were confirmed. He had been talking romantically with her for months before he left to see her, he had planned a trip to see her for two months before we ever even broke up. He said that she's the one that he wanted to have kids with, I was just someone he got with because he was bored, he even sent her $200 as a gift while we were together. He stated every reason why she was better than me. My self-esteem is non-existent today. I understand people do this sort of thing a lot, but why then come back up here and give 100% to me for so long? He was even faithful after he came back up, showing me off like a trophy. I brought this up calmly, and he freaked out, saying he felt like the walls were closing in on him and he needed to leave, like leave the state and drive very far away. I talked him down and ended up apologizing for even saying anything just to make sure he didn't abandon his responsibilities here just because he's upset. Today he is just fine, talking like nothing ever happened. I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose him as a friend, but I really feel like. I need to block him. When I say I do believe he loves me, but given what happened, I can't believe I'm the one for him, he always just defensively replies, you can't tell me what I think. Any and all advice would be greatly appreciated because I'm very lost right now. The mixed signals are exhausting. Should I approach him with hard copy evidence of the cheating or just give up? I'm so dumb, I don't want to give up, which I guess is why I'm here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. There are many interesting articles ahead.